Okay then, hello there all you wonderful, beautiful ladies and gentlemen of the internet. It is I, your boy, your Hazuki Warrior 921, bringing you, uh, I don't remember which episode number this is. I think it's 7? I think this is episode 7, right? Let me see, and yes, Master System, uh, Sega Genesis, uh, Super Nintendo, oh, Sega CD, Episode 6, right? Oh no, Pico. Pico was 6. This is episode 7. Yeah, episode 7. Uh, 32X, yep. So, before I make this episode, let me explain some things. I have some explaining to do to people out there who are very upset, maybe, by some things. They may have expected a different episode. I, I said, hey, ask me if you want to do a, say, a uh, episode on the Panasonic 3DO. Which, there's a problem with that. I completely forgot about those setups I do at the end of like each episode. And there's no spot for the 3DO. And I know that may seem like a lame reason or excuse not to do an episode on the console, but that's my reasoning of why I'm not going to do it. Um, plus, it's not part of the Sega, Nintendo, Sony, or Nintendo, Sega, Sony, Microsoft family of consoles, so I'm sorry. But this is only for the Nintendo, Sega, Sony, and Microsoft family of systems that I am doing for the series. So, with that being said, I'm sorry to people out there who wanted a Panasonic 3D episode. There's a few things. First of all, I do not own one. And secondly, I do plan on only one, maybe just for me to have personally. But I don't want it. I don't really care for, to own it with its spots at the moment. So that's another thing. You know, that's another big part of the series. I do this with the, with these boxes. I almost have all of these console boxes. I'm this, I have a Sega Saturn one being shipped out to me. That's going to be episode uh, 8, I believe. And then um, a Nintendo 64 one as well. I, I have almost everything. I just need to get a Sega Dreamcast box and a GameCube. So I think that's it. Just a GameCube and a Dream, Dreamcast. My two favorite gaming machines. Are the only two ones that don't have the boxes for yet. Every other console I own is home right now, I have the boxes. So that's, that's pretty exciting to me. Um... But yeah, I'm so sorry that I'm not doing a Panasonic 3D episode. Maybe I'll do a, a video about it just for fun. Um, but I don't know, maybe. Like I'll talk about like, how I feel about the console and kind of shoehorn it into like this series, but I don't know. If you guys really want me to do that, I, I might, but I really just just I don't know man. It's not that, it's not like I don't care for the 3D. I kinda of personally personally kinda of love that console. It's just I don't have one. And there's no nothing to be grabbing me to get one right now. But anyways. Sorry, and yeah, for my personal retro setup that you've seen and at the end of each episode, there's no way that console can fit with that setup right now. So, no, I'm sorry, this is, it's just not going to happen. So that being said, the 32X, let's talk about this thing, let's unbox it. Um, this thing is a piece of poop. We all know what it is. This is Sega's least loved console, and it kind of deserves it. I'm sorry, like, I'm, I'm in that camp. Um, now, I kind of love it, don't get me wrong, I do, there are things about 32X I do really like. But let's just be frank and real and real here, folks. This console, sh this add-on, should not have been invented. You know, we should have just had the Sega CD, and that should have been it. The, the Sega CD w was a great, you know, addition to the Genesis. It, it just looks cool. It's sleek. It's badass. It's right here. I mean, just look at that. That looks so fucking cool. Like, look at that. That looks like it belongs, right? And same thing with the Model One unit. It, and it does. It was designed to to belong with the Sega Genesis. It was designed for that console. Yes, the Genesis. The, the Genesis was de was designed with the Sega CD being released in mind. So all the Sega CD really needed was a D. Was like it had a really good library of games, but it needed more of that. Like it needed like it needed less of those FMV games, or at least less marketing for them. And that's really all it needed. But it's said to be the highest selling add-on to a console ever. So I think. So it didn't do too bad, right? So we just need, did not need this. Now, one advantage that 32X does have is its software and games here are actually pretty freaking good for the most part. These are not all the games for 32X. We're looking at all the games that you own, though. But uh, but these games could have been developed for the Saturn instead. I'm not sure how true that is. I'm just I'm just theorizing that if the 32X did not exist, would these games exist, and would they have possibly been ported to the Saturn instead? Probably, I think probably yes. Virtual Fire, for example, is on both systems. So, and so is Doom. Doom and Virtual Fighter are on both consoles. And I think Virtual Racing is Virtual Racing on the Saturn. I don't remember, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just a theory. But okay, let's get into unboxing the console unit itself. Uh, first, I'll let you off the box a little bit. I had this price tag here, which I don't want to rip it off because I don't, I don't remember this box. Um, 
So it says $60 off Genesis 3 2X games, coupons and details inside. That's kind of cool. So even right when it came out, it's like here's a coupon to get price off games. That's kind of funny. 3 2X power in performance 40 times faster than 16 bit. 32,768 simultaneous colors. That's kind of cool. Wow, that's interesting. Full library of new 32 bit and 32X games. And place all 16 bit Genesis and Sega CD games. Yep. Uh, contains Genesis 3 track system components, requires Sega Genesis to play, Sega Genesis, Sega CD control pad, and software sold separately, recommended for interest in okay. Alright, compatible, compatible with all Genesis units it's except Genesis CDX? What? I thought that it worked with the Genesis CDX. I, okay, so I knew it kind of didn't work with it, but then I thought it did because I really wanted to get one, and I still kind of do. They're really pricey too. I'm not going to make a whole episode about that thing. I mentioned it though, I think, in my Sega CD or Genesis review. But it's a cool, sleek looking little little like Genesis and Sega CD unit. But I'm not I'm not gonna like care for it like that much or grab it. Um but like this guy though You know, this guy it, it was a part of the um you know fourth generation of gaming and it is a Sega hardware. It, it is a Sega hardware console. Like yes, the Sega CD X is as well, but that, that, that's a revision. This is a whole new machine with a whole new library of games. So we're gonna talk about this machine today, but there's something really funny about its box that I really I know it's almost immediately. Some of the games on here are doubled. Okay, so you have Doom over there, you have Star Wars Arcade down here, and you have Star Wars Arcade right there. Virtual Racing Deluxe, Virtual Racing Deluxe. Oh, this game's a piece of shit. Super Motocross, do not buy this game. If you get a 32x, do not play this game. If you want to play this game, emulate the fucking thing, okay? This game sucks. It is not playable. The control inputs do not work. Nothing about it works right. I'm not even kidding right now. Sega CD 32x games coming soon. Fahrenheit, Midnight Raider, and Surgical Strike Wirehead. So, was this supposed to be, at one point, the North American idea for the Sega Saturn? Because I don't have a fucking clue. I don't think it was. I think Sega was just being stupid with this machine. And it's so sad that this machine exists. It is, it is, a, it technically is a stronger piece of tech for your Genesis, but it's not necessary. It's not necessary. It, it really isn't, man. The only thing it does is it cleans up your Genesis, and yes, the software is really good. Like, some of these games are really good, we'll get into them, but like, it did not need to exist. And I'll get into it later, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But it just makes me sad just that this thing is real. But oh well, it's not going to say anything that good about it. New Genesis 3 Tricks cartridges, Doom and Virtua Racing Deluxe. It, it's, those are on the top. It's, again, Star, Star Wars Assault, Stellar Assault is up there. Oh, I should play this game. I've heard good things about that one, I think. Star Wars Arcade, there's that golf game again, which I got this game new for some reason, like for like 40 bucks. It was not that expensive. Virtua Racing, I know, like, that's kind of funny. But yeah, um, like just today I did, but it's kind of silly though. CPU, there's all the specs if you want to read those really quick about the, about the console, if you care, it's there. Pretty interesting stuff, I, I would say. And then here's what it comes with. Can you see that? Okay, yeah. Alright, and then there's the top, oh, you saw something, oh, jeez, jeez, sorry. Alright, now here's the, here's the back of the console. So it says, the stuff right there, uh, says, Upgrades Genesis and Sega CD to 32-bit play. Connect Genesis 32X to your existing system to switch on the power. In moments, you can accelerate your existing system to incredible 32X game power. Why did Sega invent this thing? Was it to, was it to compete with Nintendo? Or in the other? In ter and who else? Like, this, this came out before the fifth generation of gaming, right? So, like, Sony hasn't really done anything yet. I don't know why they made this thing. I don't know. But anyways, arcade quality 32, 3D graphics. Yep, incredible audio. Okay, cool. <sighs> yeah, okay. There's your Jess Model, model 2 right there on the bottom. If you want to read all that, go ahead. I'm not going to fucking bother. Alright, let's get this fucking thing open up. <laughs> Seriously. Here we go. Alright. Let's just show off the unit. Yep, there we go. <sighs> Genesis 32X. There it is, guys. Now, one thing that that's kind of sad to me, well, there's, there's a lot of things that are sad to me about the 32X, but something for me personally here at home is that the 32X for the Model 2 Sega Genesis, um, right here at, at the bottom, has like a little plastic piece that you that you'd slide in like in like in like the cartridge slot right here to help it like you know to help it not be so wobbly when it when it's inside a Genesis Model 2. 
My Nina had one. It, I had one with it for the longest time, and I don't know what happened to it. I might have sold it off, possibly with my Jensen Model 2, but I don't remember if I did that when I had one. I think it's just in the house somewhere, and I can't find it anywhere. But this is the only 32X I've ever owned. I bought it back in 2016. I remember buying this fucking thing and not caring for it. Not much has changed. So, here's the console itself. Here's the AC adapter. Uh, yep, here is the, the uh, AV cables, which, you know, which is great that I have these because it works with the Jess Model 2, and yeah, they turn so. Sega CX as well. Uh, yep, and this is for the for the Model 1 unit. This goes in the back of your Model 1 Genesis. This goes in the 32X. It's kind of confusing, <laughs> but if you look at the back here, it tells you AV out is is uh, I believe there. I, I I don't have the the instruction booklet, but you would plug in the the RC, the AV cables, the composite cables into the AV out right here for the uh, for, for the video quality, right? And then you get the AV in unit right here. This 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 cord is where you would plug this into your Genesis, right? And this this you plug this into your 32X like that, and then you plug this into your Genesis. Yep, I'm not even kidding right now. And this cord is for the Genesis Model 2. Both inputs will, will look the same. So one thing I really want to mention that not a lot of uh, retro like retro like um, companies that like make modern like technology for for retro consoles mention this. If you want to get an HDMI cable for your Sega Genesis or Sega Master System by like pound I would, I would get the ones made by pound they're cheap they're affordable and they look nice and, they, and they're built well or by hyperkin they will work on your sega master system genesis M M genesis model 2 and your sega 32x it, they will work on all four of those units as far as i know they will they worked for me and they should work for you too so that's what that's that's, that's what i'm saying if you want to get a cheap HDMI $30 cable made by Hoverkin or Pound for your Sega Genesis or 32X adapter, you know, that, that basically display the consoles in, in RGB quality. It'll work on the Master System, it'll work on the Sega Genesis Mount 1, it'll work on the Sega Genesis Mount 2, and it'll work on this. So there you go. I just wanted to mention that really quick. Um, you know, a bit of a healthy tip of the day for collectors out there who, who, are, worried, who are worried about that kind of thing, but yeah, who are wondering. So I'm sorry if I'm being too hard on the machine, but really people out there want to blame like Sony for killing Sega or like Nintendo, not not Nintendo, but like Sony or people not supporting it. But really Sega did themselves in a couple of scenarios. The 32X existing is just a bad idea. I'm sorry, but I don't know who came up with this idea and I forgot to look up this. I forgot to do this. Hold yeah, on. Mr. Uh, Nakayama-san. Okay. I don't know if this is Tom Kalinske's or uh, Hayo or Heyo Nakayama's idea, like the, the Sega, uh, the presidents of Sigma America, Sigma Japan's idea, to come up with the 32X. Who invented this machine? I haven't gotten that part on Console Wars yet where it explains, hey, we'll get to this, and we'll get to this guy. But this one's stories where it's like Sega of Japan was like, you guys are gonna make the Sega 32X because the just is so popular all over in America. You guys gotta make it. You guys have to do it. Come on, come on. And then like I think, or it's like Sega of America had the idea to make this thing, and then Sega of Japan was like, no, you have to can it because of the Saturn. The Saturn is the next generation console. I believe the second story is probably the truth. That seems to make the more sense to me. Is that they're basically kind of arrogant towards the Saturn. I don't know why, but they were. And Sega of Japan said, no, 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 no. You guys have got to support the Saturn. Um, but, oh well. We'll get to the Saturn when we get to the Saturn. Also, sad but true, the 32X is only a day younger than the Sega Saturn. I am not kidding. And that's kind of shitty because it's like... <sighs> The reason why that's shitty is because you had the beautiful, wonderful next generation console, the Saturn, come out a day in Japan, and it did really well in Japan. It was a successful unit in Japan a day after the machine that would basically kill Sega as a harder manufacturer gets released, right? And that sat and the Saturn was like Sega saving grace in Japan because the Mega Drive did really bad in Japan. It didn't it didn't sell well, the Genesis didn't. And then what happened when the, when the Saturn came here to North America, it did shitty. It did not sell well. And it's so fucking tragic just to think about that, how close together they were released and how they had like very similar fates for different reasons though. The Saturn deserved better. The 32X did not deserve to fucking even exist in the first place. I know. It's, it's they're like complete opposites in some ways, which is like, what the f I'm not even kidding. Like, that's exactly what it's like. 
I'm sorry for being so hard on this thing. If, if there are fans out there of this, of this unit, and that's great for you, more power to you, that's fine. I didn't, even if I grew up with this era, and I understood what the fuck was going on, I I think I would have I would have got one for sure back then. Maybe yeah, but like, it's the one console that I'm like really like not happy talking about. As you can tell, I don't really want to talk about 32X. I don't want to express it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. But I have one because it does help clamp, clamp your genesis and its software library is pretty damn good. It's got some good games on it. They just should have been made for the, for, for the Saturn. That's all that really should have happened. But yeah, man, the 32X is here. You know, it's it never. It's not going away. It hasn't. It only lasted a year. People really, 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 really fucking shot this thing, which they should have. But even back then, they did. And I can't believe Sega was gonna make like a, like an all-in-one unit for this thing, like a Genesis 32X combo. Like what the fuck? What the hell, man? Like what? Just release the damn Saturn. Forget this thing. Like God, why did they even do this? Like I want to know the truth. I think a lot of us out there deserve to know why Sega thought this was a good idea when they were design when they were designing the Sega Saturn. I really believe that Sega of America designed this thing. And Sega because it makes no sense that Sega Japan made this. Now it, this was released this was released in Japan. It does have a Japanese version, so that raises even more questions. Because like, okay, well Sega really, really did a good job with the Saturn. They seem to have in, in over in Japan, you know, they they made they had a partnership with an electronics company over there, and that really helped out the Saturn too. Which is kind of sad that the Saturn did well because it was marketed to play movies instead of video games. I'll talk about that in, in the Saturn episode, but the th in, over in Japan. But the 32X, um, man, I don't know. I don't know why it exists. I don't know why it's here and in Japan. I just I don't get it. I don't get why this clusterfuck of a machine is here. When we had the Saturn, it makes no sense. They're both 32-bit machines. Why? It's it's like if Sony made the PS1 and like an adapter for the serial port to like basically make it like I guess 64-bit or something like right before the PS2 came out or like 128-bit before right before the PS2 came out or something. I don't know. It'd be kind of like that. I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing to describe, but. I don't fucking know. What a weird machine. Seriously, it's just a weird machine. In, in, in a bad way. In a bad way. It should not be here. I'm sorry, but I'm really sorry if you love this console. Like, I'm not trying to be hard on it. It, it. I'm not sorry, you know, that you love it. Like, if you love it, love it. That's great. I'm just, I'm sorry if I'm, like, upsetting you. Like, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of it. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, you know, so, whatever. But let's talk about software. Okay, so first off, we have a pretty decent fighting game, which I've only played this game, like, once or twice. Cosmic Carnage. This game is awesome. I really like it. Um, I know Mark from Front Classic Game Room raves about this game a little bit. It's a pretty sweet game. It is. It's definitely a a, a must own for the 32X if you have one. I, I would get it. It's a good game. If you don't have it yet, it's a good fighter. And this one, this one looked interesting to me. Uh, I think my wife bought me this game because she, I didn't have money at the time and I saw it and she's like, I'll get it for you. And I was like, thanks, honey. Like you know, we're just dating at the time, but she bought this for me when we first dated. And I've kept the sense, it's called Melhead. It's kind of like the 32X version of Titanfall, which isn't very fair to say, maybe, but it's like kind of the same premise a little bit. It's kind of a cool game. I actually really like this game. Um, and I still gotta play Titanfall, which is, it's not really fair to say that. But this game's pretty cool. I think its frame rate's a little, a little crappy, but it plays pretty decently. It's actually a pretty okay game. Okay, I don't want to talk about that game yet. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that one. But next up, let's talk about Doom for 32X. I like this version. I haven't played this one in like a hot minute, but each time I've, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It's not like, it's not full. No, I beat the game just last year. I think just last summer I did, but, and I beat Doom 2 like just a couple weeks ago, but I beat Doom 1 last year with, with my friend. We, we were streaming it together, or I was streaming it. He was like, you know, watching me play and we were talking about it, but it, it's, this game is great. It's with Doom 2, but I, I, I love Doom. Doom is, Doom is fun and stuff. And it's not bad 32X. This is really what the game looks like. It shows you on the back here. Yes, the music's not perfect, and you know, AVGN has his opinions. If you've seen this video, okay, that's fine. But yes, there are better versions of Doom. Yes, there are. I think the Saturn version of Doom is actually worse than this. That's surprising to me. I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't played the Super Nintendo version, but I really like this version. It's not terrible. It's okay. It re it's like it's okay. If not, it's at least good. It is a good version of the game, but it's just it's not complete. That does kind of hurt it a little bit. But yeah. Okay, so next we have Virtual Racing Deluxe. I'll talk about this game really quick. Um, a really, really sweet version of Virtual Racing. I only have this 
because the original version of Virtual Racing, the original game, the original Virtual Racing game is not compatible with the 32X. So they re-released it so it will play on the 32X. So I don't know. Is this isn't it a very special version of the? I think it has. Oh, it says new prototype car, new stock. Okay, so it does have new stuff in it. That's cool. Uh, I like Virtual Racing General though. This this is a good game. It's basically the same thing as the original game. Um, so that's a big reason why they made the 32X was because of Virtual Racing. It had a special like 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 chip in, in in the cartridge, and it decided just to make a whole machine out of that. And I don't know why the fuck Sega did that. I don't know why. I don't know why they did this. I really don't know why. But here it is. Sega Sports Virtual Racing. Sweet stuff. Alright, speaking of Virtua, well, well, yeah, I'll talk about Virtua Fighter next. This is probably the best version of Virtua Fighter uh, that I can think of. It was also on the Saturn, and I'm not a fan of the Saturn version of all. I like Virtua Fighter 2 in the Saturn, but this game plays like bread and butter. It is a really, really, really good version of Virtua Fighter. It is, and I'm, I just got the Astro, the Astro Mini. I don't think I played the arcade version of Virtua Fighter yet. It's on there. I gotta go play that. But like, I, th I gotta, I'm gonna play this and that together and see how they like compare. But this is a really good version of Virtua Fighter. I really like it. It feels very like beta, 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 early baby, infant beta version of Shenmue is this. <laughs> it's like the fighting in Shenmue started here. So and on this, there's definitely similarities. But I, I really like Virtua Fighter and and, and the, the the sound in this game is beautiful. The the looks, the visuals, everything. Oh wait, I did play Virtua Fighter for a little bit today. I did, I forgot. Just the sound was off when I was playing it, so I, that's why I forgot. But yeah, from what I remember, it plays pretty fucking similarly. Yeah, it does. This game is... Okay, both these games are really, really wonderful, and both these games were made for the 32X. It, oh, so, so is Metalhead. This game was actually pretty okay, but I was waiting to get to these games. Um, because they were made for the 32X. Actually, well... Okay, so it's Constant Carnage. C Carnage. But these two games right here, which I'll talk about, and though this one too, but Calibri here is designed by the same people who made Echo the Dolphin. And I really, 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 really like this game. This is a really unique, pretty, wonderful, graphically looking game. Deep in the earth, a powerful ancient gristle hums, feeling of the balance of nature. But when its toxic twin plummets to earth, nature totters on the edge of extinction. Only one hope survives, Colibri. Though small and alone, the hummingbird must bow the invasive mutation in all its malignant form to restore Earth. But at what cost? So, yeah, it's a really pretty game. You're just you're a hummingbird. You fly around. You fight animals. That's it. But it looks really fucking good. It's a really pretty game. It might not be for everybody. No, it, no. But I enjoyed this game. For sure, and so, so is my wife. We both really, 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 really like this game. So again, like I said, the software is definitely worth getting for the third for a 32x. This is a, this is an example of what I'm talking about. Not just Calibri, but fucking beautiful tempo over here, which is also on the Saturn. Uh, that sequel, Super Tempo, is, and it's the only Japanese Sega Saturn game that's like a pricey as fucking crazy. It's like a thousand dollar game. I am not kidding. It's like really out there for for, for, for the Saturn. I really want to get Super Tempo. But let's talk about Tempo 1. You may, ne you may never even, even heard of Tempo, and no, Tempo looks nothing like that. That's just a really weird US box, card ver or box art version of the game. No, he's cute and little. Like this, he looks kind of like a Sonic character, and I, and I kind of love him for like for it. Uh, King Dirge is trying to steal, Dur the D-R-G-E, is trying to steal the rhythm out of Planet Rith 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 Rhythmia. It is up to Tempo, the hyper grooving grasshopper with special sound energy to save the world of music from the evil clutches of, of King Dirt. This game plays really well, and he has like a girlfriend character that like helps him out at times and like the levels and stuff. It's really, really, really cool. I really, really do like this game. This is a really sweet game. It's got good music in it. You can listen to the soundtrack and just enjoy it. It also has like a, it also has like a kind of a Spire of the Dragon approach, I, I, I like to call it, where it's like, you know, well, this game, the other games did it first for sure, but the Quack, or, or Quack Shot, I guess, Quack Shot approach, where you can like, um, pick any level you want to when you like first start the game and, and go from there like it's it's really cool and unique Like I'm telling you please if you're gonna if you, you should definitely at least emulate the 32x and check out games like this Tempo, Calibri um, Knuckles Calyx, which we'll get to that one, Melhead, Car Castle Carnage, they're good games. They are. They are. I recommend playing this one Especially if you're a Sonic fan. This game feels like you know is made by the same people who made Sonic pretty much I don't think it was no, but I think it definitely has some inspiration. Like I would, I would play this game for sure. I would on on Kega. I recommend playing Third Trucks games on Kega. It's not bad. 
Star Wars Arcade. Not a bad version of Star Wars Arcade. I've, I, I think I played the actual game like a couple times at Dave & Buster's, but this is not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. The music's kind of shitty. I don't know what else to say about it. I really got I really got any experience with this game. It's not a great. It's not. I, I try to get into this game, but I just can't do it. I there's other Star Wars games out there I like. I'm not a fan of them too much. This beautiful freaking port of Space Harrier is just so damn good. Space Harrier Theory 2X. It's also on the Saturn. It's actually just as good as Saturn. So again, no reason to really play this version if you play the Saturn version. If you have a Saturn, no reason to really touch this game. But I, I'm a big Space Harrier fanatic. You guys, I think you guys know that. I love this game. Any machine that can play Space Harrier, I'm getting the damn game I'm playing it. I just wish I could get like a little figure of Harrier himself here. But man, this version is like goddamn freaking arcade perfect pretty much. Deep Space, The Last Blast. You pick up a frantic distress call from Deep Space. You teleport to the land of dragons, which are swimming with incredible monsters. You must laser blast your way by giant snakes and robotic monsters. Blast through rings of fire, blazing dragons, dreaded orbs, and mutant space heads. Well, that's a better description than the Sega Master System version of Space Harrier. But yeah, this version is way better than the Master System version. Oh my god, my cartridge is kind of beat up and gross. But hey, the paint still works just great, so good stuff. I love this game. Okay, now we got now we got to the last game. The game is probably in everyone's mind when it comes to, to, to the Sega 32X. The Sonic game that no one ever really talks about. Yes, Knuckles Chaotix, which I made videos about this game recently. Um, just last year I did when I beat this game. And I really did like this game, but it was just okay. Like, is this game the highlight for the 32X? Well, no, but if you're going to own a 32X, you might as well go out of your way for trying to pick, pick this game up. I paid a pretty penny to finally get this game. This is like a $150 game. It is not cheap, but, and was it worth it though? Well, I did play it 100% and it was okay to say the least. Knuckles the edgiest of Kenna on the block is back. The screaming wild white rides got everything but a speed limit. Race for the rings and hold on! Ooh! Uh, his Knuckles or one of his new friends, Vector the Crocodile, Mighty the Bee, um, S Mighty the Bee, Mighty, oh, Mighty the Armadillo, I'm sorry, Espio the Chameleon and Charming Bee. Special power-ups and larger characters to an unbelievable size, but wait, the bosses are even larger. New bungee challenges, this unique gameplay lets two pals wisps th whip through the scenery as a high-speed team. Yeah, which is kind of a downfall in this game, but whatever. 25 gigantic round of rock, or rock and roller coasters, coaster action with five huge three boss levels. This game, much like Sonic CD, does a real there's a lot like unique ideas, but it kind of does a little bit too much at times. Like it, this game has its has its highlights, it has its good moments, but it's not perfect. Um, if you like if you like classic Sonic games, I say check this game out, especially for like Sonic Mania, because a lot of ideas that Sonic Mania has, shockingly, came from this game. I know, isn't that crazy? Like, I didn't fucking know that until I played Knuckles Chaotix. This game deserves to be re-released with other classic Sonic titles. I think it really does. It deserves to be right there next to Sonic 1, 2, 3, and CD. It honestly does. Um, just so people can try it out at least. Like, you know, I think people should just give the game a shot to see how they feel about it. I still feel that way, yes. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It wasn't perfect, no, but I liked it. I think with more practice, I like it even more. I just wish you could play it on a collection of Sonic games, but no, it doesn't exist. So, oh well, but... Guys, I'm sorry for being so hard on the 32X, and I'm sorry for making this episode so short, but I have nothing else to really say about it. I say check out its games. Its games are worth playing. Yes, I think so. I, I think the 32X does have a good library of games, but the hardware itself is nothing to write home about. It shouldn't have existed, which is really weird to say that. It's like, wait, it has a good software, but the hardware sucks? Wait, what? Yeah, I know. It's Well, the hardware itself technically doesn't suck. It is a it is an awesome add-on for the Genesis. Yes, but it shouldn't have it shouldn't have existed. Technically speaking, it's a great add-on for the Genesis, but Sega lost a lot of money just making this thing. They shouldn't have done it. The 32X ultimately killed Sega. No, I believe they shouldn't have rushed out the Saturn. No, but if they didn't make the 32X but made every other decision that they've ever made, I think they would still be here. Because when the Dreamcast first came out, it was selling pretty decently well. So I really think Sega would still be making hardware today if they hadn't quit on, you know, if, if they never made this machine. I really, really, really do. If they just didn't make the 32X and just put this put this software on the Saturn, they'd still be here. Now, if they made the Saturn backwards compatible, that'd be awesome too. But really, no, the Saturn got rushed out here in the States, which we'll get into that in the set episode, yes. But none of that should have happened. It should have just come out, like, you know, at a decent level or speed, but it didn't happen. And, this piece of crap, man, it really it really makes me sad. It really, really does. But I 
don't fully hate the pieces. Like in a modern day, seeing what happened was was done is done with Sega. If you just want to own one of these, just enjoy it with your Genesis setup. Okay, that's totally fine. I say get one just for that. It is it is worth if you're I wouldn't get one of these unless if you love Sega like I do. If you're a Sega fan fanatic, if you love 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 Sega and you want to collect their hardware, then get it through 2X. If you just love retro consoles and lo love retro gaming, that is totally up to you to get one. D d you know, like okay, if you have a Sega CD and a Sega or everything else, Genesis, Dreamcast, Saturn, Master System. If you even have a fucking Master System 2, chances are or Genesis or a Sega CD Model 1 and 2, Genesis Model 1 and 2, if you have like Sega CD, Sega Genesis combination consoles, chances are you probably already have one of these. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's up to you. you know, I, I, I honestly, I don't recommend really only one unless if you just want one, like, kind of like I did. So we're, here we have the Sega CD, Sega Genesis um, setup. Now, I want to say one thing I wish I forgot to mention this. Uh, there are a few. Sega 32X and Sega CD games that exist, but they're not really worth playing. I, it would be it would be amazing if there were games out there designed like that that were you know actual like games like an RPG or you know, like a platformer or something. You know, it's like what would that look like? Would that be like something like on the Sega Saturn? We don't know. The only company that ever did this was Digital Pictures, the guys that made like Corpse Killer and Night Trap and yeah and Fahrenheit and those really weird and did what was it called? Uh, Double Switch or whatever, but. Those really weird, like, you know, point and click uh, FMV movie games. Like, you know, it's it like people on cameras and you point and click. It's like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. No, it's not worth getting any of those. I used to have a couple of them. I did not like them at all. No, like, you saw my reaction to Sewer Shark. I was like, I do not like Sewer Shark. I do like Night Trap, but the other games I'm just not a fan of. I'm sorry. I'm not even that big of a fan of Night Trap. I just think it's kind of a cool, cool classic game with, like, goofy, you know, <laughs> um, with, like, goofy, like, acting and like writing in it but it, it does deliver itself pretty coolly in my opinion but anyways I digress moving on so so how you would use your 32x is that you plug it into your Genesis like so like that and then um that's pretty much it now don't get these two ports here confused okay because I do like a lot the middle port the eight the AVN the middle the middle one right here you see that where it says AVN that's the one that you want to connect the cord that goes into your Genesis port. Now, I, I didn't really explain this too much. People out there might be scratching their heads like, wait, you had to plug in a cord to your Genesis and through 2X? What are you talking about, man? So let me show you. So here's this cord. It says, you see, see what it says top? Well, they, they should all say that, but, um, you know, even the basic Sega Genesis and Master System cable should say that. But you plug that into your Genesis, um, and then you plug this, which has the arrow, to AVN. Like that. That's right, yes, that's how you would do it. That looks silly, I know, but um, there's a reason why you should do that. It's, it's so you can see, um, the, it's so then you can see like certain graphics and like some games will not show, but show up, like characters won't show up sometimes and weird stuff like that. And this is the AV cables. You would just plug these into the AV out, like that. Yep. And of course the power would go, would go there and <laughs> The Sega CD and Genesis both need their power, their AC adapters. You need three AC adapters for this guy. That's ridiculous. I know. So you're gonna need like one of those eight, like power strips, like you know eight, eight or like or like ten, like you know input power strips. You, like, a basic cheap six input power strip is not gonna work. Sorry, but no. Now you know how I mentioned in my last video, which I screwed up the line that Optimus Prime is not complete without his trailer. I, I think I said truck. Maybe it's a trailer, but it's Optimus Prime. It's not complete without his trailer. Well, you could kind of look at look, look at the Sega Genesis 32X as like the Matrix from the Transformers 80s cartoons. It was a badass like piece of tech, but it wasn't needed for Optimus Prime. It was he just he just had the Matrix. Like the Matrix the Matrix was was cool and everything, but Optimus Prime didn't really need it. So it's kind of like that. Like yeah, the 32X is technically cool. It technically is a cool machine for the Genesis. Yes. But it, it's not needed. It doesn't need to be here. But it is, and it really hurts Sega. And I'm sorry, like, I don't want to hate the 32X. I really don't want to, but let's be, let, let, come on, 32X diehard fans out there, you gotta admit, you have to understand, you, I'm pretty sure you do, especially if you grew, grew up during the time, this piece of technology did not need to exist. And this software 
really should have been designed for the Saturn. I would have loved to see that. And, you know, the third 2X just wouldn't exist. You know, I would love to be in the universe where that happened, but we're not there. So, Sega, you, you goofs. Like, you guys doggone goofs. Fucking idiots. But, oh well. Anyways, guys, thank you for enjoying my video if you did. Watch it to the very end. Um, I'm sorry this video was so short. I'm actually kind of glad it was short. I didn't want to make it too long. I'm pretty sure it wasn't that long, but... You know, these Sega episodes usually get pretty long. So my Pico episode and Theater 2X episode are kind of like nice little bite-sized versions of that. My Saturn episode's going to be an emotional one because I love that console. I'll get into it. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a long emotional one. So look forward to that. Um, so yeah, guys, thank you for watching again. Leave a comment, like, description, below, whatever. Um, I don't know if I'm going to show any gameplay footage in this one. I, I forgot. Oh, maybe I will. A little bit for Calibri and Knuckles Calyx, I might. I'm just thinking of it's for... Oh, and for Tempo. Well, I'm going to show you Tempo in a minute. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So, I'm sorry. Um, I keep delaying the end. So, thanks guys again for watching. Have a good one. Take care. Peace out. Have a good one. See you in the Saturday episode. <sighs> Long live Sega, right? Yeah, this piece of shit made sure that didn't happen. Alright, bye-bye. Okay, let's start off with that one game I was raving about. We're gonna do tempo first. All right. Jesus.
Next up, I'm gonna put in me some good old. Well, no, not yet. We'll do uh, Colibri next. Colibri. I need my game.
I love that intro. Virtua Fighter Man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the demo play for a second because I just know something. Hold on. It's off a little bit. I didn't notice that. Some of the folks. Well, like I was saying, you know, the Saturn, the 32X does have a lot of great software on it. It just isn't a great, you know, thing, but whatever. Uh-oh. Whoops. Hello, a minute, folks. I goofed up. That was uh, AJ's intro from, from Sega Bits, I remember. AJ Rosa. Very cool, very, very cool little charm. Right My boy, Kira. That's right, with this game, you really gotta use the, um, the six button controller, I think. Yeah, yeah, you do. You can't do that in Shenmue. But so it does feel it does feel incredibly similar. It do. At least I think so. I love this game. I honestly do not love this game. Feels like Rio for sure, Hazuki. Yeah, he do. I mean, Hazuki, Rio was designed off him, so yeah. Hey, oh. You fucking bitch. It, it, it always goes like that in funny games. Oh. Fuck you, Jackie. Oh. Fuck you. Frick. Oh. Am I gonna win? Am I gonna lose? Let's find out. One more game to go. One more game I'm going to test out, and that's it. If you're paying attention, you might know what game this is. If you actually read it, oh, it was up there. Last game, and then that's it. The episode's over. Sega! That's right. I love this game. You guys do not know. This is my other, other favorite game by Yu Suzuki, probably, besides Outrun and Shenmue. Outrun and Shenmue. Outrun Shenmue Space here in Virtua Fighter 1. My favorite games by Yu Suzuki, for sure. The only problem is I just not have a lot of fun. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is not justifiable. No, it's not. No, it's not. There's one thing that's missing. One very important thing that's missing from this experience that we need to use right now. That's right, the Sega Six Bun Arcade Stick. Let's hook it up. Let's hook it up. All right. And then we'll draw ourselves some space here. Okay, let's get this guy wrapped really quick.
All right, she's, she's hooked up. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's space here time. Here we go.